<laughs> All right, so quick background. Uh, uh, so Green Dot, Green Dot Com or Corporation is an American financial technology company, so it's a fintech company and a bank holding company headquartered in Pasadena, California. So right now it's the world's largest prepaid company, uh, prepaid debit card company by market cap. It also does, recently has also been diversifying into a, a payments platform company, which we'll, we'll be talking about more in, uh, in the next slides. So it's basically a banking as a service uh, type of business. So the reason why we uh, wanted to we wanted to have exposure to fintech. However, a lot of fintech stocks have been growing rapidly lately. So a lot of them were actually we seemed overvalued. We actually looked at Square first, right? Yeah. And then we ended up like changing. That's why we had to like, switch yeah, to like, PayPal. Yeah. So um, although they do look like good companies to invest in, uh, like just by looking at how their business model worked and has good growth potential, a lot of them looked. Uh, Overvalued, so we ended up with Green Dot, which seems which wasn't the case. So first of all, what is fintech? Do you, you want to talk about fintech? Uh, so, I'll look here. Right. <laughs> uh, so fintech is so fintech is basically just finance and technology. So fintech is used to describe new technology that seeks to improve and automate the delivery and use of financial services. So you know, at its core, you know, fintech was like think, uh, companies like Visa and, and Mastercard. They were like the you know, the original fintech companies, but it's, today it's already spread out to more. You can take things like uh, lending and borrowing, retail banking, so anything that uh, uses technology to help with finance or things like, you know, finance accounts <coughs> on your phone would be considered fintech. That's what fintech is. And that's what it is. It's been growing rapidly and it's still expected to grow more in the future. So there's an expected 10 to 15% uh, average growth from 2017 to 2022, so here's like uh, the amount of uh, money going in, I believe, and it's, it's the amount of transaction, transaction value that's going in. So our uh, target price is 77, 75. We decided to use uh, FCFF and Gross uh, Valuation for PE as our uh, metric for uh, our valuation. Uh, we thought that it'd be uh, more appropriate to use FCFF at 80 percent. The relative valuation because the, the competitors, I mean, the, the comps we use for the PE were more mature companies. Um, so we thought that the PE for this company would be actually higher. Um, the beta is 0 0.71, so it's uh, actually pretty low. So it's not, that's because it doesn't even that much. But in the, past, uh, 50, in the past 52 weeks, the high was 93, so there has been a significant drop. So we we put like an asterisk here because we wanted to point out that this is like a conservative uh, market price. It was actually way higher, or not way higher, but it was uh, decently higher. But we factored in some uh, risks, so risks so we ended up with seven 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 five. So looking at the stock performance, um, the the green dot has performed really well, and then there was a recent drop in quarter four. Yeah, they'll let you know. Do you want to explain like why? Yeah, we're gonna it's gonna oh. we're gonna explain in the next slide, I think. Or like the next slide, so yeah. So you know Yeah. So um so three reasons why we think Green Dot is to buy it. Uh, the first one is that right now it seems like there seems like a good buying opportunity because uh, due to the recent uh, slump in price. So the company looks undervalued based on its good fundamentals and, and financials. The second reason would be uh, we expect growth, potential growth in the industry, as well as Green Dot has, uh, intrinsically has been growing as well and, and doesn't seem like it's going to stop anytime soon. Uh, and, and finally, Green Dot has recently been diversifying into banking as a service, like I mentioned earlier, which has been growing rapidly as of late, and they have uh, big potential for growth in the future. So they've been partnering up with a lot of big companies like Apple and, and Uber as of late, and we're hoping that it would Yeah, Walmart is actually their biggest, uh, biggest partner. So, like Jay mentioned, we had this valuation. We waited in more on FCFM because, well, FCFM because they, will, like we'll talk about later, they don't have debt at all, actually. So that's one of the reasons why we used FCFM, and then RV was just kind of, uh, was kind of uh, So, in terms of price, uh, the price dropped, like we mentioned, in quarter four, 2018. And the main reason as to why that's the case is because uh, they were looking at a more conservative outlook for their future growth. So, um, they grew like 12% last quarter. But it dropped down to six percent um, 
I mean, they're expecting it to, to drop down to 6% in the next quarters. Uh, so that's one thing that people were worried about, and eventually they... Uh, so that's, that's one of the reasons why the price dropped. And that's why we also factored in risk in our valuation. But despite that, we still saw uh, you know, potential for growth, or it still seemed undervalued even after the risk. So if management tells you they're going to have a lower growth estimate in the future, um, I don't consider it a conservative approach to lower the growth rate. To, because basically all you're doing is changing the number that is spit out from a historical spreadsheet to what management is telling you. Like, so no, that's what they said. Yes, which is, so I wouldn't call that conservative. So, okay, wrong, wrong, sure. I would no. say that is probably that's, appropriate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's what, yeah, and that's what, why that's why we factored in a lot of risk. It actually, we actually lowered it by more than So looking at their financials, um, they, their revenue and uh, uh, EPS has, earnings per share has been growing at a significant rate. Um, they haven't been becoming like more efficient. They're, they're around 10% for their operating margin. Um, and yeah, this is another uh, financials table. The operating margin has been around 10% and their revenue and EPS has been growing at a significant rate in the past couple of years. Looking at their capital structure and balance sheet, um, they've been keeping their current ratio at about 1, which um, I think is, is good. Um, something that stands out in their capital structure is that they actually have no long-term debt. Uh, so, that, that's really good to see that they can, their interest coverage is like really high. And most of their current assets are just in cash, like cash in hand as well. They're over a billion dollars in cash. They'll have a zero debt, so that's, that's So for the comparable companies, we uh, uh, use companies from their 10K who they thought were the biggest competitors, um, which doesn't really dire directly compared to like, the companies that are like, most similar to them? I think it's because a lot of these companies are bigger companies that just doesn't focus on, on prepaid cards alone. Uh, so, the, but these guys still do offer prepaid cards, but they're not as, in yeah. terms of like the market value on that, they're yeah. not as big as prepaid cards. Yeah, so we used uh, US Bank, American Express, JP Morgan Chase, Visa, and Western Union. Um, yeah, the things that stand out with their comparables that they have no, they, they're not too pretty zero. And uh, their operating margin is at uh, 10%. Peter asked a question. No, that's it. Um, well, so the operating margin is percentage, but it says Green Dot and Chase Visa both have an operating margin of 100%. 100%. Uh, and then the other companies have it in the, the 80s and 90s, and Western Union has 40. Because um, 100% yeah. operating margin would mean that 100% of yeah. your revenue yeah, that's not is uh, is their operating profit because as well, we so they would have no like cost of sold. Oh, yeah, another one. It's right there, so it's it's actually at 10%. Okay. Oh. Well, what about um, gross, like gross profit? Change. Maybe I'd switch gross profit and operating I think you might have like uh, switched the gross profit. The, the decimal point, I think, from 100. You didn't put it there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because. I, I know JP Morgan is like a big company, but I, I, I feel like their operating margin maybe isn't 83%. Yeah, it's, it's definitely like okay. 83%. I must, I must have used the wrong chart. Yeah, you think our other margin is oh, okay. yeah. yeah. Okay, so one of their key metrics we mentioned before is their, um, they, have, they have no long term debt. Um, and their other metrics are that their revenue and net income is growing at a significant rate. All right, so our sec the second thing we wanted to point out is their growth in, in the prepaid card uh, industry as well. So prepaid cards have been growing pop popularity late, as of late, uh, especially to newer generations, so that would, uh, millennials and, and younger generations have been increasing, uh, have been, uh, the use of the prepaid cards have been increasing. So we did see like their market share. So you can see here they had around 20% market share uh, out of out of all the prepaid cards. But given how 
uh, the size of the company, they're actually the, the biggest when it comes to just by looking at their, their market cap. So um, they have 20% shares, uh, which is still uh, significant, given that they have a lot of competitors like you know, JP Morgan and PayPal. And, So the active growth rate, uh, I can see right here, has been increasing. So there's a 44, 41% increase in their uh, uh, active active part uh, the past year. So there has been an increase significantly, and that's probably the reasons why their their uh, their price has been increasing up until the last quarter when they said that this would, wouldn't be this much of a growth. But uh, so. Oh yeah, so just the overall prepaid debit card uh, outlook. So people, uh, so there has been like a, a constant growth from like the 2017 to 2022 uh, outlook like I mentioned earlier. And here's some graphs to, to show <coughs> us the references that we used to, to get those numbers. So yeah, those are some graphs. Is green dot active in any country besides for the U.S.? No, we just wanted to show that just how the, the overall growth, but you know, they're, they're mainly a U.S. <coughs> Here are more growth forecasts. So the red line right here would be the 2022 uh, forecast for global prepaid market, and it shows here that uh, the, the biggest growth would be in the retail establishments, which is where uh, most of where Green Dot mostly operates. In. And then, yeah, so just more growth forecasts of uh, uh, so this one's a trend analysis as well. Uh, like I, I mentioned a while ago, there has been there's a 2015 to 2016 study by the Federal Reserve that showed that there's an, there's been an increase in popularity with uh, the use of prepaid cards for, with millennials. I think a big reason of that is because it's, e it's easier to use uh, than cash. Using a card because these are open-ended prepaid cards, so you'd be able to use it anywhere you want. Essentially, it's a debit card without being linked to a, uh, a bank account of any sort. So you don't need any credit. You don't need that you're just loading money inside this card instead of using cash. So I think that's one of the reasons why it's been increasing the popularity. Uh, so. so another thing we wanted to know, uh, point out is that uh, so as a, when they started, they were just a, simply a, a, a prepaid debit card company, but now they've been focusing a lot on they've been putting a lot of resources into banking as a service. So for so what so banking as a service essentially. Uh, like, like the name suggests, uh, it, they they act as a bank for a lot of companies that can't just be banks on their own. So, for example, companies like uh, Walmart or Apple or Uber, let's say they try to get payments from from people, and they and people <coughs> might have a, like a set, let's say that they, they might want to pay through uh, a debit card, but they don't want to use their debit card, or they want to pay through a prepaid card. They would have these. Uh, for, for example, Apple has this new credit card that they're trying to they're playing and, and Green Dot uses and they use Green Dot as their uh, technology that they use to to uh, make these debit cards and credit cards. So that's one of the things that they have been focusing on lately as well. So some of them like you mentioned would be Walmart, uh, Apple, PayPal, Intuit, Uber, and other companies as well. So, okay. Uh, so, for for news, like like I mentioned, uh, Apple recently announced in their last like uh, when they talked about it that they really they announced that they're having a new credit card and that there there's been a little bit of hype around that as well. So, and uh, upon doing more research, we actually found out that it's powered by Green Dot. So a lot of so essentially when they do get they'll actually get a cut from. From the revenues of Apple, that Apple would get from uh, these credit cards, so that's one thing that we want to we might want to look at for future growth. Um, some risks would be, like you mentioned, Green Dot is a pretty small company by market cap. Um, although they do have a big chunk of their uh, market share, despite being a small company, bigger companies might want to leverage it, uh, leverage their their size essentially to compete with Green Dot. That's one thing that. You know, we, we took it as a risk. And I think another risk is that their 37% uh, of their revenue last year was from Walmart, the departure of Walmart, and their contract expires in 2021. Um, but it is, uh, they are supposed to renew it as long as there's nothing, nothing goes wrong with uh, their agreements and stuff. So, um, 
But they've also been a partner with Walmart since like 2014. Yeah. Sure. Sure. I mean, so um, that's one thing that, it, it, although it's a risk, we, we can expect them to continue doing work. Because it doesn't seem like and it's been growing even, so I don't see why it did. But the other thing is that the other partners they have, uh, the other, the other partners uh, account for more than 10% of their revenue. So they have a lot of most of the revenues from Walmart. Explain Green Dot's business model. Like, how who pays them? If they partnered with Walmart, are they getting payments from Walmart? Are they getting payments from the holders of their prepaid debit cards? Explain how the business model works. Uh, as far as I can tell, because like when I did some research on the, the app, on Apple's case at least, because they offer banking as a service, so I think it would depend depending on the company. But in Apple's case, for example, they would take a cut of the revenues from from uh, the money that Apple makes. So I think if you go to the previous slide, it, it, it mentions like they get uh, fees from the interchange income on reward balances. So so when 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 Apple makes money from the interchange income, they would get a cut from that. And they also did mention this thing with float income. That's, I'm not sure if I understand it super correctly, but float income essentially is just money that, uh, so it's like you can do two places at once, right? So if it's float income, I thought that uh, kind of like what Robin had does with money that isn't being used. I don't know if that's exactly, if that's correct, but that's how I understood that part. But for the most part, uh, they, they get it from interchange. Sounds like this is just on the rewards balance, which would be a fairly minimal, from a smaller kind of percent than like any transaction on the card. Uh, sh sure, but I mean, I don't know, maybe this isn't Apple's case, but what I what I understood when I did uh, research, it really depended on, on the company, because they essentially just, uh, Acted as a service, so they do multiple things for multiple companies. So it depend, really depends on the company. But in cases like Apple, where it's 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 uh, uh, a credit card or a debit card, they would just take a percent cut of the revenues in that. I think it would be good to have a clear understanding of how they actually get paid, um, especially if, say with the Walmart, with the bigger customers. Um, from my understanding, these cards typically. Uh, target low-income people who are not able to have bank accounts, and there's been a lot of issues, regulatory issues, about whether this is a predatory service, so that's something I would also look into. Um, so in your comps, uh, I mean, I was just doing a quick search while you guys were talking, and I'm kind of wondering why you didn't have Total System Services, which is a company that acquired NetSpin, uh, in your comps. We did look at that spend, but it was a private company. I'm sorry. But it was purchased by this other company that is public. Okay. Because I think that's a much better that direct was, competitor. I think yeah, we, we kind of relied on the 10K and what they mentioned as direct competitors, but it's probably because it was it recent that. that um, Acquisition looks like it was 2013. Oh, okay. So, yeah, we just based it off what, what the 10K had to say, and they didn't mention that company. So, yeah, I did see NetSpend. NetSpend, I think, is their biggest competitor face to face. Um, I think, in terms of like their size, NetSpend definitely would be their main competitor. Although, when I did look at, I, like I said, it was a private company, so I didn't see any, um, I wasn't able to see any like financials or anything on NetSpend. So, but now that you mentioned that they did get purchased, which is pretty obvious. Yeah, I think I'd probably take off like some, like a couple like JP Morgan Chase, where yeah. I'm assuming this is such a small piece of their business because they're so diverse that it wouldn't be, I think, a meaningful comp. What was on the chart that you guys, that pie chart, were those competitors? No, that's just their share of the market. In terms of prepaid cards, oh, yeah. share of the market. So like, see, is the biggest oh, yeah. one, and they're the second biggest one, and then the rest are just like other competitors. So those are definitely their main ones. So we should definitely look at Uh However, I don't know if we can find the exact this is, I'm assuming it's a bigger company, so it's going to be a bit longer, so I don't know if we're going to be able to see on just the next one. No, but I would take a look at the company overall. Okay. Because uh, I think it might be more instructive. Uh, yeah. um, do you have a breakdown of their revenue percentage by, like, revenue savings? Uh, I, we actually do not know. 
Are you talking about by, like, by company or like? Yeah, no, not like, um, not from their company, but like, so they make money off of interchange fees yeah. and then like processing and then other stuff. So you have like a breakdown of that. Yeah, I. I don't know what we do. Uh, we could. We could. I haven't. I was able to find one, but I could try. Um, yeah. So uh, in 2018, it was it was roughly 30 percent from interchange revenues, um, about 24 percent from processing and settlement service revenues, and about. The rest, like almost 50% from card revenues and other fees. Um, I just kind of want to see like a breakdown of those and explain kind of what that actually means in like the complex terms and then make it like in simple terms as well. So you said 50% uh, in cards and the rest are in the Yeah, 50% um, roughly card revenues, 24 from processing and settlement services, and then the rest from interchange, about 30%. So. All right. yeah. Um, so you had mentioned Robin Hood towards the end. I'm wondering, do they provide banking services to they them? Do not, no. I just mentioned it because I think that I thought that that's how the, the similar service when it comes to building income. That's what I thought it was because they did something similar to that. That's what I assumed that they meant by building income. Because, um, it wasn't too clear because it was like only a few. They only talked a bit, a, a bit about it because the, the, the whole Apple credit card hasn't really been out yet. So there's not a lot of information about it. So it's really confusing. So that's what I assumed they meant by building income. But I'm not entirely sure. Case because we would look in more into it once Apple actually releases their credit card. So that's just like a new, so just like a new section of our presentation. So is that something that they're looking to get into if they're going to go into just more general finance, just setting up their version of that? I, I, I think, think you guys might be just misinterpreting the to the term float income. Yeah, I don't think right. they're after the same target market or providing any similar services to a lot of them. No, that's what I was asking. Were they going to get into like stop trading? Oh, no, 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 no. That's what No, I just mentioned like money, yeah. how they use the money. That's what I okay. Just how they use it, but not how they get that money. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, awesome. Oh, I might be kind of miss, I'll, I'll think about this right away, but how would, like so, you you buy this green dot card for fifty bucks. You give the company fifty dollars. Would that count uh, in their cash and cash equivalents? But would it also be considered the liability to balance it out? So I mean, if essentially you had fifty dollars in. So cash. it's the way like like the way banks like if you went to Wells Fargo or whatever credit union you use and like gave them money, that money that you deposit at the bank. Yes that's in your account is a liability on the balance sheet. Okay. Similarly, if you put your money with Green Dot, that's essentially not a bank, but mm -hmm. acts in a, in a way kind of like a bank, mm -hmm. um, you're, they, that would be a liability. So for a current ratio of only a little over one, really they don't have any money besides what? No, they have a lot of money, they just have a lot of current liabilities. Which is, they yeah, because it's, it's the same ratio one to one, right? So sure, for every $50 yeah. that I gave them, they, Essentially, they don't really have that fifty dollars really to spend. No, they that, that, that's why back out so they have ca actual cash in hand. Yeah, yeah, they in have the fifty dollars they gave you, but if Which I go spend it now, they have to pay it so back out. So essentially, have double that. So remember, accounting—you have two entries for every transaction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So if you gave them fifty bucks, mm -hmm. that go to or no green dot, um, they'd have fifty dollars more of cash. That's an asset and a fifty dollar liability. Right. So those balance each other out. Yeah. yeah. So. If you spent that money, it would reduce their liabilities and reduce their cash position. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. that's, I guess I was just trying to think like if everybody checked out it all at once, what would they have left over? You It'd know? be fine because it's so uh, over one. Point oh three over one. Right? Yeah, so they only have like three. No, they, that's just over. One. They still have the cash. So. Okay, so with banks, there are certain capital requirements, which means banks have to keep like, like ten percent or. Or like I'm pulling a number, but like the, it depends on the type of bank and the type of deposit and a bunch of different things. Mm -hmm. But there's like a number that they have to keep on hand in like liquid assets in case people come and want their money. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So they have capital requirements. For a company like Green Dot, I'd have to look exactly how they're registered um, because it's prepaid debit <coughs> cards. Um, like in a bank account, when you put money in, in a in a checking account, you earn some minimal like interest rate on it. I don't think that's the business model here. Um, and so I don't think they're registered as a bank. They're probably treated a little differently, so I'm not sure how they like their capital requirements work. It's something that's worth looking into. Um, but they're treated a little differently. Uh, 
because their customers have prepaid debit cards, those customers, I imagine they'd have greater liquidity needs, a company like this, because the kind of customer that would use the traditional bank maybe isn't accessing their money quite as regularly, where like the, the kind of customer that tends to use a service like this are people who don't have access to banks. They're cashing it out quite often. They're cashing it out quite often, yeah. yeah. So, okay. So, um, kind of in regards to what you were saying about uh, predatory lending, for mm -hmm. Logan, would that include, um, like, I buy a debit card, we pay a debit card, and then I lose it, is that kind of why it's more predatory, or? So, you, like you, you, buy, you buy a card, you pay a $5 fee right. to, to activate the card, and then you pay between 5 and $10 a month to maintain the card. So over the course of a year, you're paying like 150 bucks, and these are often next to people who maybe only keeping the balance of a couple hundred bucks. So oh. the the yeah. rate, of the interest rate, they end up paying it, or they end up paying roughly like a third of what they keep on the card in fees. Um, it's similar with like payday lenders. That's why it's considered credit to them. So also they do have. They did mention, however, that they do not offer uh, monthly uh, monthly fees if they have over a thousand dollars. But then, like you mentioned, prob they probably don't have a thousand dollars. So, so the, yeah, yeah, it's like a, I guess it's like a marketing scheme. In the <laughs> so if if you do lose a card with this company, can you get that replaced, or once it's gone, your money's gone? I would, well, yeah, I would assume your money's gone because it's essentially losing like a debit card, uh, losing cash, sorry, because um, because although your your name is linked, your because like uh, I think the SEC or something. Uh, it requires you to give your name and your your and your passport. You basically just need your name, your passport, and all those. But that's essentially all that's that's linked to your your debit card. That's it. Just your who you are. But it's not linked to anything whatsoever. So if you do lose it, you should. You should so. Okay. So would you would be able to find any numbers on like how often cards are not used within their expiration date or something like that? Uh, they actually do not expire because you get charged every month for for if you still have money in that assuming you still have money oh, you get so charged. If you lose it, you're gonna get charged until it's all gone. Te yeah, technically. Yeah. Or so, so I would probably follow up on this point, but I imagine there's a way to replace cards. Um, you can yeah, you can get a new one. So you can get a new one, but you, you're that money inside that unless if it gets uh, used by someone who stole it, then I think that, is that what you're asking? Well, you said you can call and cancel it, kind of like oh, card okay. and fee. Oh yeah, you card, yeah. Oh okay, good. Okay. Oh okay, I see what you mean now. If not, not if some like you just see you lost it, and you don't know where it is. It, it, not someone's stealing it. Well, I mean, well either way. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. All right, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you should be able to call them because it is linked to you. Okay. So with all the talk about banks, are they subject to any banking regulation, like the FDIC? So like Marty was talking about, if the, if my bank gets robbed, I'm reimbursed up to $250,000. If these guys get, I suppose, hacked, I don't know if they have any physical locations. They're not, they're not really a bank, so they only act as a bank as a service for certain companies. So I would assume that these companies are really the ones that's liable. They're just um, the ones that act as like a, like a, a mediator. So it's not, they, they shouldn't be liable to any of that because they're not really an actual bank, as far as I know. So, yeah. Yes, I don't know. Act kind of like And then also, so you mentioned Walmart a few times. Do they have any other big box retailer or like physical so, component stores like Target or, yeah. Costco, or anybody so, that has stuff? They have over 100,000 stores that their their prepaid cards actually uh, available. So Target will have prepaid cards for sure. They, you know those, those, those um, Direct, you, you could probably see it from that part there and, and, and all of those. So, the reason why Walmart's probably a big, that's why they mentioned 30% of the revenue comes from Walmart, a big reason is because two of their businesses are with Walmart. So, uh, part of their business is banking as a service. So, those Walmart cards are actually banking, that, that part that part would be banking as a service in Green Dot. Like, they have Walmart cards, right? That's actually powered by Green Dot. And they also have a lot of sales coming from Walmart which are the Green Dot prepaid cards. So that's why a lot of revenue comes from Walmart. They have a big partnership with Walmart because two of their, essentially two of their biggest um, business models, or their business uh, would, uh, has something to do with Walmart. So, 
that's one of the reasons why a big car, a big chunk is in Walmart. But it's not all, and pretty big cars are all in, in banking and services. Both. Yeah. And then um, with Apple, you said that they were going to get a cut of revenues. Do you guys know how much that is, or did they so say? So they did not say anything yet because again, yeah, it's a fairly new thing. But I don't think they would have mentioned it. So they already power do their. They provide services for Apple already. Yeah, but that's Apple their Pay. yeah Apple Pay. Yeah, but there's there's a new credit card coming out, the credit actual credit card. Mm -hmm. So which is going to be the banking as a service for Apple. So the one right now is just the prepaid card part, or like the for the prepaid Apple Pay thing. But now it's going to be the actual credit card that's going to be coming out. So they it's essentially just additional news for Apple, but they have been partnering. Are you concerned about the fact that Green Dog seems to have very low customer satisfaction? Like there have been a lot. Like this is the money pack thing. If you just Google Green Dot, uh, you get consumer yeah. fraud reports, yeah, like one star review on Yelp overall, like thousands of reviews. That's what what's yeah, there? that's that's something that I did notice uh, as well, especially for Money Pack. That's one of their things that there's some theories with Money Pack, and Money Pack was kind of known as like a device for for scamming people, and I think that's one of the biggest reasons why it's dropping because of that Money Pack service. But uh, however. Um, like, I don't know, I don't want to, like, when, when you look at reviews, most of those are usually going to be negative anyway, and uh, a lot of these are people that got scammed, like I like mentioned, like a lot of them are probably the ones that are frustrated that they lost their money, but the, but for the most part, a lot of people who actually use it just for, for convenience sake, I don't think they would be uh, saying anything good about it, because it's essentially just for convenience, but it would, shouldn't really affect the company's, like, overall. So you're not concerned that my first Google search for for Green Dot, I get headlines such as in the first page of Google search, con artists offer Green Dot cards over money wires. I mean, I'm sure if you look at PayPal, and there's a lot of PayPal scams out there as well, but you don't really say, oh my god, I'm not I'm never going to use PayPal again because I got, people got scammed by it. I think it's more of like just, you know, it's not really they use Green Dot because Green Dot's an easy thing to, to use to scam people. It's just that prepaid cards in general. And since Green Dot is the popular choice, it's one of the biggest ones, it would essentially just, it's more of like a, a, a tarnish to, to prepay cards in general, but not really Green Dot as a company, because you're not really offering things that are, like they don't do it so that scammers will, will, will be, will be, will be, uh, you know, will be successful, but it's just, it's, scammers just probably use Green Dot for that. So I think that's something that we should look at, but it's not, it's, 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 uh, it's like part of the business, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. So whether it's an industry-wide problem or a company problem, I, I think either way, it might be a cause for concern and something to think about a little bit more. Just saying that the entire industry has the same issue doesn't necessarily make it an OK issue. So I'd look into that one. OK? Oh, um, yeah, so if you look at their uh, comparable companies, at least the financial metrics you guys chose, they have one of the highest PEs, which makes more sense because they're more growth and less mature than the comps. Um, but they also have uh, the lowest peg ratio, so maybe that growth is kind of warranted. So what would you say that their growth strategy is, and how does it um, kind of compare to their competitors, and why is it? why would we invest in them versus their competitors. I think it's because the, a lot of this, this growth has been because of their recent uh, diversification to that banking as a service. And I would imagine now that it's, I think, 50-50, right? I can see prepaid cards being, is I don't know. I mean, you mentioned the it's 50% of prepaid cards and the rest are in oh, the then, service, right? Yeah. So uh, since they were like 100%, um, like just like five, 10 years ago, or five years ago, then you, there's like a shift into their like I said, that's a, that's a big thing that we want to look at is their, their banking as a service has been growing really rapidly. So we can see like a shift to maybe being more of a banking as a service company in the future. So that's one outlook that we want to look at. Which I guess uh, counter counteracts the whole thing with like the, 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 the bad reputation of, of, of prepaid cards. If they do switch to banking as a service, then that might have like lessens the risk in, 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 in the case of not having a good reputation in their prepaid card service. Uh, business part. So if it, if it does become like a small part of their business in the future, then that's a risk that will like slowly become less of a risk. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, that's, I guess, that's, that's a tough to answer to your question. All right. Uh, um, <coughs> just uh, reading a little bit more is that they have like a cash back kind of thing happening uh, for customers for, you know, uh, is it like a reward thing? Uh, are you talking about like, like uh, Apple and Walmart when they, when they offer credit cards? I guess that could be, I'm so just reading that a lot of customers are really happy with the cashback feature. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, they do not have a cashback feature for their prepaid cards, but they do have for their banking as a service when they, when these companies do offer, uh, when these companies do offer the same credit card, they will have a cashback, like any other credit card. So yeah, they, they definitely have one, but not for the prepaid cards. Right so I've seen ads for some, some service, and I can't remember the name of it, but you get you can get paid early using it. For some sort of That's right, it's, it's it. Yeah, it lets you get paid early. It like, the, I, I can't remember the name of it. I've seen a few ads for it, though. Um, <coughs> and it just like essentially checks with your employer and is like, yes, you're going to get paid. And then they load it onto this card for you, much like Green Dot. Is that something that they're looking at? Uh, I don't think, I mean, they didn't mention anything about that in specific, but if I were to that would be cool if it did, yeah, I didn't see it. Okay, and last, last thing, and this is a think about for your follow-up, but where does this fit in the portfolio, given that it would be in the tech sector, but we also have a couple different we have Visa, we have Discover. Um, so we're starting to get a little heavy on like <laughs> credit-based services. So where does this fit? What would you have to sell? Or what would you sell? Um, there's one of the reasons why we actually picked finance is because I think it's underrated right now, right? Yeah. It's, under it's about like a percent like or two, yeah. Yeah, it's a percent. So that's one of the reasons why we thought that we would pick that. So we actually look well, at financing. It is, a, it is definitely underweighted. We do need more finance companies, but we also do hold a lot of Visa and a, a big chunk of Discover, um, which, which 